Hello. I just got the notice that it's showtime. So here I am. Whiskey friends, far and wide, we are live on the tube for another tasty Tuesday happy hour. I'm Eric, the humble malt muser. Good to see folks in the chat already. I hope everybody had a nice Labor Day weekend. As we are getting into September, starting to cool off a bit here in Philly. Hopefully uh, it's chilling out a little bit around y'all as we get out of this hot summer. And excited to have another Tuesday whiskey chat with all you good people. So let's get into it. Before I set things up, let's see what we got going on in the chat. Who's in early? Nola's in the house with Lost Cause, Ricky Bobby 2020. <laughs> All right. He's setting us up. Setting us up on a nice trajectory with that one, dude. Good stuff. Duluth, Minnesota right behind him with me. It's the French. Hey, everyone. Greetings from Duluth. I'm doing a Highland Park 15 tonight to start tonight. Hope everyone had a nice Labor Day weekend. I did. I didn't have a full Labor Day weekend, but the weekend was nice. How about you, French? Thanks for swinging by as always. Prefers the 18 over the 15, but it's so expensive. Yeah, that's a pricey dram. The 18, I think, is like 140 bucks maybe compared to the 15, which I think is discontinued, actually. Um, but, yeah, if you can still find it, I remember it was like 70 bucks. Something like that might be a little bit more now. I don't know how long you've had that one for, French. Do let us know. Texas representing Daniel, what is up? Saying hi to some folks in the chat. Good deal, good deal. Starting off with an Altmore 12. Nice pour. Going to be visiting Campbelltown tonight. Right on. I'm going to be talking about some Campbelltown whiskey relatively soon, too. Outstanding, but so is the 15, says Daniel. Hawaii and Juan beaming the signal across the Pacific all the way to Philly. What's up, buddy? Happy Tuesday. How was your weekend? Mike Meyer, he's back. I'll raise a glass to you, Mike. And I do love your Guns N' Roses avatar. How are you? Happy Tuesday, buddy. What's going on? Doing well, Daniel. Doing well. Can't complain. It's starting to cool off here in Philly. It's almost to the point where I don't need an air conditioner on anymore, which is great. Sleeping with the windows open at night. It's one of my favorite times of the year. I love fall in general. And, you know, this wind down of summer, it's just perfect. So I'm doing well, buddy. Anthony, what's up, man? Happy Tuesday to you, sir. Thanks for swinging by. Appreciate that Patreon support, by the way, man. Thank you so much. I am doing well. Hope you are as well. Oh, another Minnesota in the house. Mike, you're not the only one. I believe Mr. French is a bit up the road from you in Duluth over there on the Wisconsin border. Karch's triple wood yesterday and ordered the Fino from your review. Oh, nice. Both really great pours. So cool that you could find the Fino. Not super easy to get your hands on anymore. That Karch's triple wood, that's the cast strength, if I don't if I recall. That's good. I liked the triple wood in general. Had that sherry, you know, a little bit of that sherry influence in it, which I, I just love sherry in a good peated whiskey. Yeah, man, that's a great pour. Andrew Page, what's up, New Jersey? Kids in bed, hauled a bunch of bottles up from the basement trying to decide what to pour. <laughs> oh, man, what are your options? What are your options? That sounds good, man. Great to see everybody. Let me set things up. We got three hours of whiskey chat coming at you tonight, as always. And here's what I got lined up. So this week, as I'm heading into October, every week in October, uh, I'm going to review a 10-year-old. 10th month, 10-year-old whiskey. Why not? <laughs> I'm creative like that. We're going to do some 10-year-old whiskey. So I've cracked a couple open, which I'm going to be sipping on tonight. Some kind of entry-level stuff. Some stuff I've had, some stuff I haven't. Revisiting some of those, those whiskeys that I really enjoyed when I started my flight and or my journey, rather. Figure we could talk a little bit of the younger stuff. 
What do you? Uh, what are some of the whiskeys that you started off with? Do you revisit any of any of them ever? Are there any of your favorites that you still keep around? I got a couple here on the bar. What I have in the glass currently, the classic Glen Morangy Ten. I haven't had one of these in like a, probably two years. We got a Glen Goyne Ten Year Old, which I think is the youngest age statement thing that they put out. Uh, I had actually never had this before, so I just cracked it and started sipping a little bit of that. Also, I've been spending some time with Glen Scotia. This is double cask. It's a PX and X bourbon or first fill bourbon uh, uh, maturation on this. This is a non-age statement, but uh, all of these are in that like $45 range or less. And then tonight, um, Telix and I are going to be taking a trip to the Orkney Islands doing some Highland Park. Uh, we are going to start things off in the first hour with the classic Highland Park 12-year-old, another easily uh, uh, findable whiskey, affordable, delicious. We'll be spending a little tasting on that. And then in hour number two, we're going to check out the Highland Park 21. Uh, Telex has not had this yet. This is the new Highland Park 21. Um, so he's got a sample of this in hand, and we will be visiting that. So we got a whole bunch of fun stuff lined up. I hope you all can hang out, chat whiskey. Maybe learn a thing or two, maybe teach us a thing or two, right? That's what it's all about. So let me just catch up here on the chat. Las Vegas, Mark Stengel, what's up, buddy? How are you? Mike's got a Russell's Reserve single barrel at the moment. Great pour, man. You get the cotton candy note on that? Cotton candy or like marshmallow? Man, I get that on a lot of wild turkey stuff, but especially on those Russell's, the 10-year and the single barrel. Those are really good. I love both of those Russell's Reserve. The rye, the single barrel rye is really tasty too. Friday for Daniel. Lucky you, man. Lucky you. Mark says, I have that. Which one are you talking about? The Glen Morangie or the Glen Scotia? The Glen Goyne? There definitely are some great 10-year-olds out there. Which ones do you like, man? Any in specific that are favorites of yours? It doesn't even need to be a 10. I mean, just something in that like you know, $50 or less single malt can even be an NAS if it's good. Like a, this Glen Scotia double cask, for example. What else do we got going on? Oh, McAllen Fine and Rare in the house. What's up, man? UK represent. Had the Glen Scotia double cask earlier tonight. Good deal, good deal. Be curious what you thought about it. I will be uh, posting a full review with my thoughts on it um, Friday. Not bad pour at all. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I once had a long night with Glenn going 10, and it was pretty good from whatever. <laughs> all right, French. <laughs> right on. Ah, the Glenn Morangy. Yeah. I don't know if anybody can really be into scotch without drinking the Glen Morgie 10 at least at some point. So you're in you're in the right place for that. Peter White, have you seen the new Aaron 18 Sherry Cast? No. I haven't seen any of the new Aaron stuff. In fact, I actually haven't been out shopping in a while, but I haven't heard or seen anybody that I know who has seen it on the shelves around Philly or South Jersey for that matter. So not even really sure. Hey, Emily, how are you? Thanks for swinging by. Happy Tuesday to you. Ah, my mistake, McCallan. Germany, 2 a.m. All right, man. You're hanging out. Not the UK. I have to remember that. I think I saw the McCallan and made that mistake. Won't happen again, buddy. Decided on a single cat. Jesus. 21 year old single class bear athol. Okay. Andrew Page ain't messing around tonight, y'all. That sounds like a great pour. Ah, Ardbeg 10, Lafroy 10, Edredauer 10, Lechag 10, some of my favorite 10s off the top of my head. Glenn Moyne, bad. Just want a good pour and don't have to think about it. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Totally with you on that. Um, indeed. Silverlock, how you doing? Thanks for swinging in, popping in to say hi. Happy Tasty Tuesday to you as well. And the entire club. Yeah, pretty easily accessible. I'm going to actually pour that in a minute. 
Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, I I have not seen the Aaron the Sherry. I haven't seen the regular any of the new release Aaron stuff in the states at all. I did get a bottle a while back of the Aaron Quarter Cask, the Bothy, just like the newer one. I'm not sure where it is. I haven't opened it yet uh, with the newer bottling, but I you know that was from the UK. So, anyways, I'm gonna do a little bit more of this. So, you know, Glenmore G10. I've actually still seen this under forty dollars. It's not bad, you know. It's a really good palate starter. Not offensive. It's got some decent sweet flavor, some honey, some vanilla, a little bit of peach. It's forty three percent too, which is great. I actually, for the longest time, thought this was forty percent. And from the last time I had it, they've actually changed the bottling or the labels a little bit. It looks like the age ten years looks a little different on here now, but you know. Not bad. This this is one I think would be a really good pour for somebody who is just getting into single malts, or wants to get into it, and like not really sure where to start. You know, there's always those people who think that every scotch tastes like Laphroaig or something like that. So this is like one of those you could really ease in. It's kind of like monkey shoulder in that way. It's not too bad. Fruity. Vanilla, toffee. I'm not sure. I'm not going to get too deep into the tasting and review of it now, but I don't know. I got a soft spot for the Glenmo 10. I, in general, kind of like Glenmorgy stuff. So, But let me know. What other 10-year-olds or just kind of entry-level stuff that you guys fans of? This has actually been kind of fun. For the last couple of months, it's either been bourbon or a little bit more kind of specialty aged whiskeys. And so it's kind of fun going back to trying some of those things that maybe you overlook. <laughs> that is a good start. Hope all is well in Florida. Oh. Okay. You talking about the Aaron? That's a good price. Ralphie just reviewed Aaron 10, 90 points. Oh, wow, really? I didn't even know Aaron made a 10. I have to take a look and see if I can find that around here. I've been hearing a lot of good things about, about the, the Aaron stuff that's been coming out of it. Oh, yeah. It's like the Aaron 10 is around, about 40, 45 bucks. About what you should expect for that. I have to check that out. 37, yeah. Glenmore G10, that's that's the good price for the Glenmore G10. Oh, really? Okay. You don't like that? The Lasant is the Sherry cask, right? The port was the Quinta Ruban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Peter White, how's, how are things in Canada? Happy Tuesday. Oh, wow, 40%. You know, I've seen this too in the UK where like Lafroy 10 is 40%. I don't understand why they would drop the ABV like that. It just seems bizarre. They think it plays better in the market or something. People there want less flavor in their whiskey. I don't get it. Oh, man. I've got some non-fans of the Lasanta. I It's been a long time since I've had that one. Since it's 43%, I'm going to put a little water on it, see what happens. There's a nice kind of lemon note in this. Graham crackers. Peter White, Distillers Art, Hunter Lang. Oh, you're talking about that Blair Athol. <sighs> right on, man. That's a good gift. Nice Dillish. Oh, you've been there, man. Yeah, they're all they have the highest stills in Scotland, from what I'm told. And actually, what I've we're doing some reading on this. Glen G10 was actually the most consumed single malt in Scotland pretty much for like year after year. And I think now it's still in kind of like that top five, it's just, or top three, it's like always in there. It's basically like the the Budweiser Miller Lite of Scotch whiskey or something like that. This is like the thing everybody goes for for a whiskey. 
And I kind of get it. I mean, it's like, it's an easy pour. There you go. It, it doesn't, you know, I think pretty much anybody can enjoy it within reason. It makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Their stills are apparently, yeah, they're like the tallest, which is why they get such a like kind of light effervescent whiskey to some degree. You know, that heavy stuff doesn't make it to the top. Yeah, there you go. Clinality 12. Yeah, that was a good one. I had that a couple of years ago. I'd like to get back. In fact, I want to get into more Glenallocky stuff in general. I really enjoy um, pretty much everything I've had. I recently had the 15. That was great. All sherry. Good deal. That's some 40 pounds there. Yeah, the Chegg 10, Springbank 10. Yeah, it's gotten pricey. That's for sure. That is for sure. Yeah. Oh, and I almost forgot. I mean, what would be complete if we don't revisit Mr. Cloudy, right? I will check this out again, bottom of the hour or so. This is what we got left, y'all. A lot of sediment, maybe two or three pours left. <laughs> We're now all, yeah, three and a half months into it. Can't not do that, right? What kind of, what kind of Tuesday happy hours are going to be without that? But we'll check that out too. Forgetting that is embarrassing. I got. I hope I didn't worry anybody. <laughs> yeah, those are all great pours. Yeah, all pour twelve. A little pricey, but good. A lot of love coming in for that. Uh, Aaron ten, man, you guys are getting me excited about this one. Callan says it's still the number one single malt scotch. Okay. Yeah, I, I had read that it was like right there. Maybe there's like a couple years where it's like number two or something like that. But um, yeah, this is the go-to malt for uh, the average uh, alcohol consumer in Scotland. So there you go. Yeah, string bank 10. For sure. Penelope 10 port. Oh, man, you guys got a bunch of great, great ones here. <laughs> it looks like a cathedral. Ben Romic 10, 57%. Oh, is that the Imperial cask or whatever? I know there's a regular Ben Romic 10, which I think is 43, but then there's that one. It's like the Imperial Proof or something is what it's called over here. And that's like a cast strength 10-year-old. Man, I never get to find that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will for sure, for sure, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, uh, last week, if you all didn't catch it, um, we did raffle up three samples of that to Patreon supporters, which I'll get in the mail relatively soon. If you're not a Patreon supporter and do want to chip in enough for a dram or two a month or something like that for the show, I'll just drop the link in here really quick. If anybody's interested in joining up and supporting, man, appreciate all y'all. I'll definitely be doing some more sample giveaways. We'll figure out some other fun stuff to do as we go along here, but appreciate uh everybody that has uh, become a supporter so far so cheers to all of you and for everybody that just hangs out in general it's tuesday right it's whiskey chat it's always a good time yeah yeah that's what i'm thinking if i can get a fine enough strainer we'll do it hmm so the glenmo you know it's i i can't complain as I said, it's probably been about two years since I'd really had this. It was definitely one of those whiskeys that I got into kind of when I was first starting to buy scotch. It's hard to not, uh, it's hard to pass it up, especially when you started kind of on the lower end, not wanting to spend a lot of money, which is what I was doing at the time. <laughs> Boy, do I miss those days. <laughs> um, yeah, not bad. Next one we'll check out. Uh, let's do the Boom Boy. So, Glen Goyne 10, again, pretty easy to find. They also have a 12, so it's kind of interesting. They got a 10 and a 12 year. Uh, this is European and American oak, so it's basically just, yeah, it's sherry, it's sherry cask, European oak, and then some Rex bourbon. Um, natural color. Does say so on the label here, 43%. So that's cool. 
does not say anything about chill filtration. I do think Glengoin chill filters pretty much all of their whiskey. And honestly, I've had a back and forth relationship with Glengoins. Um, really liked the 15, was underwhelmed by the 18. The teapot dram is unbelievable. Um, and then I have a Glengoin 25, which I'm going to open up eventually. I've also had a sip of the Legacy uh, Chapter 1, which was okay. Uh, nothing to really write home about. So really the only one of their core range that I've not purchased is the 21 and the 12. But this 10, again, it's very much in that Glen Goyne style, right? It's the it's pretty like light on the palate, mostly heavy sherry. But this 10 is maybe a little bit more surprising than you would think. The 18 I found I found to be like honestly kind of flat and even as it went down i mean i i let that thing sit with oxygen for like six to eight months it just never really turned the corner for me but this one it's got a little more youthful vibrancy to it be curious if anybody's had the glen going 10 before if you have any thoughts on it or glen going in general all in all i really like like their profile but oh yeah a lot of fresh sherry on this the thing about them, it's just, yeah, they're they're a bit thin on the mouthfeel. The 18, I thought, was underwhelming in terms of its complexity. Whereas that 15 seemed like the sweet spot. Yeah, a lot of sherry, Christmas cake, apples in this. Like Granny Smith apples. Mm. Mm. Very typical of like a 10 year old. Heavy burst of flavor at first. And then it really just starts going down. Short finish on this one. But you do get for a few seconds, it's got a pretty full mouthfeel. Totally not bad. At a $40, this is another one I think would be a good whiskey for a bourbon drinker who's trying to get into scotch just because it does have some of that richness that I think a lot of folks like with bourbon, you know. But boy, that finish is short. And it does have a bit more spice, though. more spice than the 18 for sure. Again, it's younger. That's what I think that's what's, where that's coming from. But yeah, not bad. Not bad, not bad. Hey, look who it is. It's the Swami. How are you, man? Hope you're doing well on the mend, all that. I want my whiskey filtered with a colander. <laughs> yeah, you might need to. And your page. Oh, you're talking about that Blair Athol. Right on, right on. Oh, damn. 1993. What's the ABV on that? I'm not even sure I heard of that one. I was actually talking to a friend of mine a couple, actually a bit earlier before this show, who's just getting into some Kalilas. He, had a, he was sipping a Kalila 12 and was talking about how he's seen a lot of different independent bottlings of Kalila. It seems like you can get a lot of those. I can't imagine, though. That one sounds like it's pretty, pretty intense. Oh, McAllen fine and rare. Okay, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I agree. That's what actually stopped me from buying their 21. It's pretty readily available, but it was only 43%, which just kind of like turned me off. I was like, I'm not going to spend 160, 150 bucks. No, it was more than that. It was like 180 on a 21 year old at 43%. It's just like, come on, man. Put it at 46. And like all of these, this one, yeah, this one's 43. I think the, the 18 year old is at 43. Now the 25 is at like 48, which I'm really looking forward to. What else we got going on? <laughs> Swami laughing at your BS whiskey notes. <laughs> I'd love to hear your, your tasting notes on the Glen Going 10. <laughs> <sighs> uh, you're too funny, man. 
Ja. Art bag. Trevon just appeared. Yeah, I've not had that one. Is that like the 19 year old art bag? And again, like, it's really not bad. It just drops off really fast. It has like no staying power at all. It's like one of the shortest finishes. <laughs> this should move, the finish on this Glenmore 10 is shorter than the more the Glenmore G, no doubt. Uh, molasses is in the house. What's up? Happy Tuesday. Which one? By who? I didn't delete any of your comments. And there's no uh, wrenches in the house. Oh, are you talking about in compared to the, the Trevon? Yeah, it is, right? Oh, and they're on the second batch, too. Didn't, like, Ralphie just do a review of that? I thought I saw that pop up. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess it was right. No, I haven't. What is the ABV on those? It probably changes by batch. Yeah, this 10, man, it's like the nose is really nice. When it first hits your mouth, it's like pretty solid. And then it just really drops off. I mean, what can you really expect, I guess? I'd like to compare this to the 12 and see how much difference there is. <laughs> it's definitely more flavorful initially than the Glenmore Chief, but I just wish it would hang on a little bit longer. Emily Chambers 2. Oh, we got two Emily Chambers in the house. Look out, y'all. What's up, Florida? Y'all cloning down there? Oh, okay, got you. Yeah, I haven't had it. Telex actually has a bottle of it. And um, I got to get him to give me a sample. Anyways, yeah, so bottom of the hour, let's just recap. So like I said, man, uh, just checking out a couple younger whiskeys today. Revisiting a few, trying a few others. Still going to do this Glen Scotia single cast. Of course, we'll check out Mr. Cloudy in a little bit. We still got a few drinks of that left. Tonight, Telex and I are going to be doing some Highland Parks. So we'll do Highland Park 12 uh, in the first hour. It's been a while since we both tasted on this, so this should be fun. And then the second hour, we're going to do the uh, Highland Park 21. This is the August uh, 2019 release. Really solid stuff. He hasn't had a chance to taste this one yet so it'll be fun for uh for us to do a tasting of this one i'm looking forward to it it's, it's a good whiskey so that should be fun hope you all can hang out once telex goes live i'll definitely drop the link as always in the chat we can migrate on over there hang out what else we got going on oh not to put <laughs> I don't even know. I know what you're talking about. You're talking about the cat, the the chill filtering thing that he was that video that he did, where like he still didn't mention that the tube of the Lafroy ten cast drink batch twelve actually has uh, says it's non chill filtered explicitly on. I don't know why we were. I actually chatted with him a little bit about it, but he didn't mention it in that video. But he did get into that whole barrier filtering thing, which was interesting enough. You should check that out if you haven't seen it. Yeah, man, I don't know. I get like a serious ginger thing going on in this. Caramel. I don't know. 
I'm going to spend some more time with this Glen going 10, but it's fine. Surprisingly, actually, <laughs> it's a bit more interesting than the 18, at least initially. It's just too bad it doesn't hang on any longer. The 18, I just thought, was really flat and boring. All right, anyways. All right. So I got a full review of this one coming out Friday, but this one's pretty good. So this is the Glen Scotia double cask. NAS, 46%. This one's also like in that $45 range. Probably the cheapest Glen, uh, Glen Scotia that you can get your hands on. So if you're all looking to try a Campbelltown whiskey, this wasn't, you can do a lot worse than this. It's finished in American Oak and PX Sherry. My initial tastings on it, I felt like the bourbon really overpowered the PX finish. But see if that's changed at all. I know McCallum said he's had the had the uh, Glen Scotia double cask. I'd be curious to hear what you thought about it, then. It's his Manx buff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm way behind. Fuzzy cask. Yeah, it did. I got the batch seven. It's awesome. But yeah, the price definitely went up. Those used to be easier to get or cheaper to get rather. I think it was uh, like 150. Worth getting if you can get your hands on it, man. It was it blew my mind, but I've heard other batches were really fantastic too. And when you could get it cheaper, I'm sure. Is that an easy one for you to get over in uh, in Germany, McAllen? Coincidence, Ralph, your food, Trevon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, got, you have to buy it overseas. You're never going to find it in the U.S., Hmm. They don't, it's like a distillery only bottling, but there are some places that sell it. Um, you just have to get it shipped. So find a place and prepare to like pay a bunch in shipping. So you might as well make sure you get a bunch of things at once. At least save yourself a little money on shipping. Of the three men, this is definitely the most complex of the three that I'm tasting. It's not bad. It's, it's nothing to write home about, but it's totally not bad. Yeah, spicy for sure. I don't get as much of the PX on this. It really seems like a lot more bourbon forward. Like There's some kind of, I don't know, it's like apple, maybe some berry or something like that. But Nice on the palate, rich, thick, man, gingerbread. <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. I'm just getting gingerbread off this. Salty too, man, the brine. It's good. Yeah. Totally solid at whatever, what is it, 45 bucks? Solid pour for sure. You do get a little bit of that funkiness that's kind of characteristic of, you know, some of the Campbelltown whiskeys, right? They do have a signature kind of, no, to some degree, mustiness. I mean, I don't think this is anywhere close to being the Glen Scotia 15. But if you can't find the Glen Scotia 15, This is relatively easy to get your hands on at a decent price. Yeah, a little bit more of the sweetness on this now. But not bad. That spice note, though, too. Damn. It's like Christmas spice or cinnamon. Emily Chambers, I don't get the hate from bourbon people about non peated scotch whiskey. I mean, if you can't do peat, fine. But why write off old? Because it's like all they think. 
it's the same thing. I think it's the same logic of like tequila drinkers who drink Jose Cuervo gold, which isn't even real tequila. It's a mixito. It doesn't have 100% blue agave sugar in it. And they drank it in college and they threw up. Everybody knows somebody who has that story. And they all say, oh, I can never drink tequila. I'll never drink tequila. It's exactly the same thing with bourbon drinkers who are like, they tried scotch when they stole it from their dad when they were 17 and were like, oh my God, it was so hot and spicy. I'm never going to drink it again. And they swear off of it and they think everything tastes like Laphroaig or everything tastes like, you know, Johnny Walker Red or whatever the hell it was. I think it's just this, people get this idea in their heads and they write off all sorts of things. And there's tons of good, uh, the, obviously the best thing about scotch is the diversity. You can try so many different things. There's so many different flavor combinations. The way the barley and sherry works together is fantastic. It just, you know, they all get that same idea. Ask 10 people on the street what scotch tastes like, and I bet you seven of them will say, oh, it's like really hot and spicy and smoky. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I love bourbon, but like the idea that bourbon has some like more complexity or something is mind blowing to me. There you go. Oh, to live in in Europe. Nice. Really? I didn't even know that existed. Damn. Okay. I could get in on that. There's a nine-year-old Heaven Hill finished in Ardbeg casks. Shit. That's going to the top of my list. I got to find that. There's also some tequilas that are aged. Oh, there's some in bourbon cast, but I don't know if they've done any in scotch cast. That would be fun. But what else is going on? I'm sure there's only a little PX. But yeah, I think you're probably right. The way they present it, it makes it sound like they're going to be like even Steven, but I don't know. This isn't a bad whiskey, though. This is what the box is like. Glen Scotia, non-chill filtered. It says right on there, which is awesome. Yeah, it's probably just X bourbon finished in PX. It's just I'm surprised, right? I mean, like I think of some of the PX finishes I've had, where the PX is so much more prominent. I don't know. Anyways, it ain't bad. Grabs your mind. <laughs> yeah, totally. Scotch is not Joseph Magnus. This is true. This is a double cask, not Joseph Magnus. <laughs> Rob Clemster's in the house. What up, Rob? Good to see you, buddy. Been a little while. Thanks for swinging by. Callan said, uh, I have Roy and a bunch of barflies visiting uh, from Frankfurt last week. Attended eight to some tasting. Glen Scotia was the favorite of them. Oh, wow, man. That's amazing. Super cool. Which Glen Scotia did you guys taste? Was it just this uh, uh, double cask? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Release from North Star Spirits, 66.1. Oh, wow. Damn Peter White. You and I got to talk, man. <laughs> we got to do some sample swaps. <laughs> I got to get in on that. That sounds amazing. All right, y'all. It's about that time for Mr. Cloudy, our good friend. Here's what it's looking like these days. dangerous. I'm starting to do half pours now so we can extend this as long as it goes. But if y'all haven't been keeping score, got this bottle three and a half months ago with a lot of excitement, but there is a note in it that is just the funkiest, weirdest thing ever. I've talked to the distributor. I even got to interview Glen Scotia about it. The consensus is that the cloudiness itself 
and it was was probably off. The, the flavor note is definitely off. It is like chewable vitamins and shoe polish, or as Telex said, chlorine. It's just bad, but we are at the nitty gritty and it's kicking up all sorts of <laughs> all sorts of sediment. By far the cloudiest whiskey. You can go back on each week on happy hour and take a look at how this bottle has uh, progressed, but this is what it's looking like in the glass. <laughs> Freaking Mississippi mud pie right here, y'all. But I haven't went blind yet, so we're going to keep tasting it. <laughs> Mark Stengel said excellent. <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. It That funky note, which was diminishing for a little bit, it turns my stomach even a little bit just smelling it now. It's so weird. Again, I my general feeling is that this bottle was just not taken care of properly by the people I bought it from. But there's that good whiskey underneath it. Nice sherry notes, deep, spicy, full. But man, that chemical-y note all over the top of this. <sighs> Musty, chewable vitamins. God, man, it's so cloudy. <laughs> Good that. All right, here we go. As I've said repeatedly, the palate on this is really good. <laughs> oh, man. The palate is so good. But then it goes into the finish and it's right back to that. God, it's like Necco wafers or like those just chalky Pepto Bismol tablets or something, man. It's so messed up. I'm excited though. Uh, Telex got a sample and confirmed that this is messed up, but three lucky people from Patreon are also going to be getting a sample of this because I got them sitting right here. These are going to get boxed up soon. Um, Andrew Page. Brent and Daniel will be getting these relatively soon. I won't forget about you. It might take me a couple of weeks, but I'll get them to you. And I'm going to throw another sample in there for you guys, but I'm going to make sure this lasts until then. So you guys can hop on and share your notes. You're going to get at least a solid, huge pour out of it. If not two decent pours. Oh man. It's so chalky now. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you on that. It's going to be sad, but it's not going to be amazing. Woo. Yeah, y'all. Let's put a little bit of water on it. This whiskey. <sighs> I think it's funny. I'm looking at this like a, there's going to be scotch mist in it or something. Like the entire fucking bottle is scotch mist. Scotch sludge. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. You had several single casks, 15 and the Victoriana. Nice. I'd be curious, are you, uh, did you prefer the 15 or the Victoriana out of those two? I haven't had the Victoriana in a long time. How much did you pay for that bottle? I forgot. Yeah, um, this was like 150 bucks. I was quite excited about it, you know, 10 year single cask Glen Scotia straight from the hand filled from the distillery, you know, here we are. Hmm. I feel like I need to wear a hazmat suit when I drink this. Oh, he said Victoriana. Okay. Did you do the cast rank Victoriana or the regular? I know that there's like two of them. Hmm. 
Mm. Sour. <laughs> it was hand filled at the distillery. Yeah. You can see the signature right on it. So these are supposed to only be available for purchase if you are at Glen Scotia. However, there was a company online selling these, which is what piqued my interest. And I had bought some things from them before, never had any issues. It didn't have any wrapper on the top. It was just the tape over it, which is probably the first red flag. Uh, but yeah, single cast shot bottling. So it goes, we'll put that away for next week. This has been another edition of Mr. Cloudy and all the irreparable harm it causes me. <laughs> you two are too funny. Dude said, ouch is right. Ouch is right. Ouch is right. Silverlock also prefers the Victoriana over the 15. Okay. We got some Victoriana fans in the house. I'm not sure I agree. The 15 was special. I mean, I suppose if you consider price, I got the 15 for like 50 some dollars and the Victoriana was upwards of 95. I really like both of them. The 15 was really special. It tasted wise beyond its years. Rich, complex. The Victoriana also, but yeah, that 15 was amazing. I'm really looking forward to eventually spending more time. The Victoriana I, th I found is a bit more beguiling even. I actually, there's a lot of complexity and a lot going on in that. I've never been able to totally put my finger on, on that whiskey, but I'm spending some time with it. Once I'm ready, I'll definitely be posting a review for sure. Genius had preferred the 15 over the Victoriana. They're pretty different. The thing about the 15, which I thought was funny, is I, I just assumed that there was some sherry in that. There's no sherry. It's all ex-bourbon. You wouldn't know it just by taste. Anyways, y'all, I got to get something else in the glass to cleanse the palate from this experience. And I think I'm actually just going to stick in at least the Glen Goyne or the Glen Scotia range and go back to this double cast. That should wipe it away. Anyways, a reminder for folks who are interested in hanging out tonight, um, once the happy hour ends, we head on over to see Telex. He and I are going to be doing a tasting of the Highland Park 12 years old. And then in the second hour, we'll be doing the new Highland Park 21 years old. This is the August 2019 release, 46%. So it is different than the old Highland Park 21 for those of you who uh, keep score at home. But yeah, Highland Park 21 will be up in hour number two. Delicious stuff. Telex hasn't had it yet, so I'll be definitely uh, interested in hearing his take on it. Whoa. Yeah, I don't think I remember that. Mm. It's so nice to taste a decent whiskey after drinking that. <laughs> drinking Mr. Cloudy. <laughs> It really is. I'm always amazed at how much better it is. Wow. That's a good price. Silverlock. Silverlock, where are you located, by the way? I thought the Victoria had a richer mouthfeel. Okay, I can, I can get on with that. Emily Chambers looking for some Mezcal suggestions. Peter White. Yeah, definitely. So if you like the younger ones, the, uh, I have to think, Illegal. There's a couple from the brand Illegal that are pretty solid. They're, um, man, what is that one? There's also like one called Union Uno, which I thought was really good. It's a really young Mezcal, relatively cheap, smoky and spicy as hell. All right, we got another Midwest boy right on. We got two folks in from Minnesota. We got somebody from Illinois. I'm originally from Wisconsin, so man, good to see my Midwest people in the house. Love Chicago. My, probably my favorite city in the U.S. Where are you at? Like Schaumburg or uh, Cicero? Mm. 
Yeah, I think for a starter, you go with some of the younger stuff, Emily. Just look for any of the like Blanco stuff. Pretty much any of the any of the non H stuff, you should get at relatively decent prices. It'll at least give you a sense of the profile. I enjoyed Mezcal quite a bit. <laughs> Naperville. Okay, right on. Daniel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were supposed to do it last week, uh, but unfortunately, uh, my samples didn't arrive in time, but they did They did show up since the last time we talked. So good news on that. He's been pining to try this uh, Highland Park 21. Has anybody had the new Highland Park 21? My guess is, as it hasn't been super accessible in the United States for a little bit of time now, it's probably just some friends uh, across the ocean may have had a chance. McAllen, I don't know if you're uh, if you've had a chance to try the new Highland Park 21 at all. I quite liked it, and I'm looking forward to trying it again. Daniel, are you a Highland Park fan? Have you tried the new Highland Park 21? If not, maybe that'll be the one I send you. Basically, I'm going to send you, Brent, and uh, Andrew Page, either the Highland Park 21 sample, a Brook Lottie Black Art 4.1 sample, or a Lefroy 25 sample, which I'm also just going to throw in a randomizer. <laughs> so maybe you'll end up getting the Highland Park 21. But I wanted to get you guys some primos, primo stuff. So those will be fun things to taste. Ah, uh, what else? Yeah, <laughs> I wish someday. Uh, Glen Scotia is definitely one of the places I would want to visit because honestly, I just really like their whiskey. I mean, that's why I bought this in the first place. I loved the 15 so much. Um, it was my whiskey of the year in 2019, well before I talked to them. And um, and they were straight up cool guys. So yeah, if anybody's interested, I did do an interview with them related to Mr. Cloudy. So you can find that on the channel. You had the old Highland Park. So the one thing I noticed with the old Highland Park, they changed the ABV of this one. That one was like 47.5. This one is 46. They dropped it a little bit, but it's cre It's got a bunch of weird agings, which we'll get into on Telex's show. But it should be fun. Right on, right on. Well, you have a 33% chance of getting a sample of it. Yeah. I recently tried the 16-year-old Twisted Tattoo. I think I reviewed that last week. That was quite enjoyable. The thing with Highland Park is they just put out so much stuff. It's really hard. To, I mean, it's hard to keep up with. And honestly, I most of it I just <laughs> stay away from because I don't know what to expect. I'm not sure there's a distillery that puts out more whiskeys than Highland Park does. <laughs> Maybe McC not even McAllen. I mean, in the last year, God, I've seen Falkner, the Volfather, Wings of the Eagle, Spirit of the Bear, just like, just like so much. NAS, Highland Park, with different finishes, Volfather. It's hard to keep up with it. Full volume, I've heard, is good, which is like, I think has an age statement on it. That's probably the next one I'm going to get from Highland Park. Because I love the Highland Park 12. That's my probably it was my top in my top five go back to whiskeys. I think it was my number one. And for good reason. I think Highland Park 12 is the quintessential. I don't know what I want, so I'm just gonna throw it in the I just gonna pour this. Because it touches a little bit of the base. You get a little bit of peat, slight into smoke, you get some sweetness, you get some bourbon note, you get some sherry. It's, it's got everything. It's right at the intersection of like everything with scotch. And 43% natural color. I wish it wasn't chill filtered, but you know, what can you do? No, you shouldn't. They're all around $300 bottles. So, um, yeah, I'll just throw it in a randomizer. Share those guys with you guys. I'll be at the Campbelltown Malt Factory next year. Come on over. Oh, man, would love to. 
love to, man. I would love to. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how the world looks. Email me at malt.muser at gmail and let me know kind of what the, uh, what the lowdown is on it. I'll definitely consider it. I can't make promises, but that would be amazing, man. Thanks for, thanks for the heads up. Fart of the horse. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, they're just, they have so much stuff, man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They are out of control. You can't, it's hard to make sense of it. The thing is, is like, I, I generally have never had a bad experience with the Highland Park. And so, like, I'm always curious, you know. It's not like an Aberlauer. If I walked into a, into a travel retail store or any store and I saw some NAS Aberlauer, for example, I would just be like, hard pass. But Highland Park, I, I've never had a bad experience with the Highland Park. So I'm always tempted, even with some of these NASs, but there's just so damn many of them. It's hard to it's hard to even pick, man. I don't know. It's like they put out a release every other week. <laughs> what can you do? What can you do? I mean, apparently their their whole like rebrand gimmick must have taken off because they must be selling whiskey like crazy. If they're able to put out all these releases and are and there's a market for it. But yeah, I haven't even touched their their UK only releases or the stuff you can only get in Europe, man. There's like dozens more. <laughs> Hmm. Man, I'll tell you. This Glen Scotia double cask. Out of these three, the Glen Morangy 10, the, Sco the Glen Goyne 10, and the Glen Scotia double cask, if you're going to spend $40 on average for a whiskey, Scotia double cask. It's the way to go. Comparing it to these, my review's coming out Friday. I don't want to tell you the score, but I think I would have given it maybe a little bit higher had I compared it to a bunch of these tens. But it's still good. Yeah. Do a little bit more of this Glen going. We're hitting the top of the hour, y'all. We got 14 people in the chat. It's been great hanging out for another Tuesday. Tasty Tuesday. Happy hour with everybody. I will let you know as we got Telex on the clock. Once he is ready, I will drop uh, the link in the chat. If folks want to migrate on over for another uh, two hours of whiskey chat, as I mentioned. We're going to talk Highland Park 12. We're going to talk Highland Park 21. So we got two Highland Parks coming up this, tonight. And Telex will likely be uh, ready in about 10 minutes. So I'll drop that chat uh, link in the chat when we're ready. In the meantime, let's keep it going, y'all. We're just getting started tonight. Mark said Twisted Tattoo. Yeah, that's the one I did last week. Twisted Tattoo is pretty good. And they had an age statement on it. I dug it. Yeah, big time. Big time. Nail on the head, McCallan. Great having you in the chat tonight, buddy. I know it's late for you, man. Glad you could swing by. <laughs> you think about travelers. Oh, yeah. Try not to. Your head is going to explode. There's so much of it. It twisted mine. <laughs> Mark, yeah. You're not lying. Warning. Campbelltown whiskey's fouled by Fecial. Yeah. Yeah, that I believe. Daniel says he just poured the Clint Scotia 15. It really does. I I was blown away by that whiskey. Now I hadn't had the Victoriana at the time, but I did two I had two whiskeys of the year last year. For under 100 bucks, Glen Scotia 15 was the winner and it wasn't even close. And then above that it was the high uh Brook Lottie Black Art. But yeah, man, it's so good. It's incredibly well put together. Find a 15-year-old whiskey that's is at the quality level of that, there's not many. Not many. Glad you're enjoying it. That's one of those whiskeys where I, I wish I would have grabbed a couple extra bottles because it's not it's not super easy to find, you know? 
and that's just the reality of things. It's like if you can't buy stuff online or buying online is really limited, like it is here where I am in Philadelphia, like you can't just you know go online and have anybody ship to you. You run into this situation where you got to get it when you can, which is kind of a bummer. Trooper, what's up, buddy? How are you? Thanks for swinging by. The happy hour is alive and kicking, my friend. What you got in the glass? 6 p.m. in Las Vegas, where our good friend Mark Stengel is probably getting ready for his first pour of the night. Elizabeth, do you, or I'm sorry, Emily, do you think there will be more Marsala and port finishes coming in the next year or so? I don't really know. Um, port, I feel like most distilleries are going with a port at least at some point. It's not clear to me who else. I like, for example, I know, um, you know, there are a couple that that have come out with some port finishes relatively to re relatively recently. There was a, I think there's a Glen Allocky port. Obviously, the new Glen G fourteen port, which is the Quinta Rubon, is went from twelve years to fourteen years. There's that one. Um, there was one other port wine finish one that that popped in my head recently. I mean, I know there's a Kilhoman port, but they're not always super easy to get. But you know, the more the merrier on that. There's just not a lot. Well, there's not a. I shouldn't say there's not a lot. I just think it's like you kind of got to hunt for them. But yeah, I think those are some of those. So those are definitely some to keep your eyes out for. I don't think I've seen a Highland Park port. Is there a Highland Park port finished? I'm not even sure. I mean, I'm sh I shouldn't be surprised. They have like 75 different releases out right now. I'm sure that there's, there's a port somewhere in that. Yeah, I agree with you on that. DH Silv 2 is in the house, and we need more power to finish this whiskey. Yeah, I agree. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Cheers. What's good in Ohio? Troopers here fired up, doing Glen Glen cast strength. Okay. We were chatting about that earlier. I've actually never had the Glen Glen cast strength. As I was mentioning, man, Glen Glen has kind of a, been a hit and miss distillery, and it's mostly because I think that they're kind of light on the palate and it suffers from honestly <laughs> what's the best way to put it uncertainty like the 15 i thought was really good the 18 i thought was really flat the 21 is i'm skeptical on because it's 43 percent this 10 year old which i think is actually pretty vibrant and somewhat interesting but it has like the shortest finish i think i've ever had on it on i on a on an age statement whiskey i'm surprised how short this is i mean the this thing really tapers off i'd be curious how it compares to the 12. so like yeah i don't know man when going is one of those distilleries where i'd be curious how that cast drink lands I know that's an NAS, but I I can almost guarantee that it's probably stronger than this 10 or stronger than the Glen Goyne 18 was, which I thought was a major disappointment. Hard to get even a hold of malts these days. Yeah, that's truth. Trooper saying hi to some folks. Your cast is so expensive and good casts aren't much available. Most of the series are exploring new ones such as Port Rum, Marsala, Madeira, Rioja. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That makes total sense. And all the better, right? The diversity is what makes it fun. Like I was saying, I did that Highland Park Twisted Tattoo, 16 years old, which is the Rio. Uh, it was a solid whiskey. Let me catch up. Let me catch up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think uh, Glen Scotia puts out a cast drink whiskey. Well, they do. I, I'm lying. The Victor They have a Victoriana and a Victoriana cast drink. But yeah, I've got a 15 cast strength. You know who does put out a 15 cast strength is Glenn Grant. Glenn Grant actually has a 15-year-old cast strength. I don't know how easy it is to get your hands on. And to be honest, I've only had the Glenn Grant 12, which was a solid 12-year-old. 
but yeah, you don't see a lot of that kind of thing. That would be that would be cool. Uh, what else is going on here? Folks saying hi to DH. Mark Simple says I hate when that happens. I don't know. I love red wine finish with less sherry, and I've heard I think sherry barrels are getting harder to source. So wishful thinking for me, I guess. That makes sense. He says, I like the 18 versus the 15. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I definitely was the opposite on that one. I found that the 18 just really underwhelmed and the 15 being like $30 cheaper. I just thought the 15, actually, I just, I thought the 15 was a more interesting whiskey in general, but no, I hear what you're saying. They're definitely neither of them were anything to really write home about. Have you ever had the Glen going 21? That's one that I'm really on the fence about. Seeing that it's 43% and almost, you know, 200 bucks, I was real hesitant to pull the trigger, especially after that 18-year-old that I had, which I thought was just paltry at best. I'd be interested if anybody's had the Glen Going 21 and has anything to say about it. Because I do have the Glen Going 25, which is 48%. I'm going to open that up a little bit later this year. I'm kind of saving it for a special occasion, my birthday, um, which is in November. So that'll be coming up soon. But yeah, definitely interested if folks have any opinions on the Glen Going 21. Because that one is the kind of the enigma to me. In the meantime, also be interested if anybody's had the 10 versus the 12. This 10, man, it really seems like it's going to do your, do you justice. And then it just falls off the cliff. <laughs> Trooper says, haven't opened it yet before. Oh, yeah, 121. Okay. That's a, yeah, at that price, shit. I wish. Now I see it. It's like $180, $190. All right, y'all. We're almost time for Telex. Let me get, let me let you guys know when he is ready. As I mentioned, we are going to be doing some Highland Park. We'll be visiting one of my old favorites, the Highland Park, 12 years old. Body bada boo. I think he has the Viking Honor edition, but whatever. We're going to do that. And then in hour number two, we will be checking out Highland Park, 21 years old. This is the August 2019 release, which is the first release of the new Highland Park 21. So 46% as opposed to... 47.5 and there's a little bit more um there's a whole bunch of information which i'll be sharing on the show so i hope you guys can join uh we do this every tuesday for anybody who's new in the chat um this is a uh, a regular occurrence and telex is ready for action so uh check out the chat i just dropped the link in there and we'll hang out for a couple more minutes before I see you all over at Telex's show. So if you're going to join, I look forward to uh, chatting Highland Park and continuing our whiskey talk with everybody. If you can't join, appreciate you swinging by tonight. And uh, of course, we do this every Tuesday night, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern. And whiskey reviews come out every Friday. So appreciate y'all hanging out. Silverlocks at the 18th stood off for him on the Glen Goyne flight. Okay. Interesting. 25, but 21 is best in terms of price performance. Okay. All right. Good to know. 12 is solid. It's a decent Sherry 12. Usually around 50, 55. Yeah, I haven't had the 12. DH says 21 is also the first fill, I believe. Yeah, okay. Even at 43%, yeah, that, that's a good consideration. All right, y'all. It's been great hanging out with everybody, man. Everybody stay safe. Be well. I'll either see you over on the Telex and Malt Show or I'll catch you next week. Cheers, everybody.